Thank you for joining us this evening. Let me start out by introducing our ALP leadership team. In Greenwich, we're very fortunate to have a full lead ALP leadership team to support our advanced students. This chart illustrates the team membership and our roles and responsibilities. I'm Bonnie O'Regan and have been the ALPS facilitator since 2012. I work collaboratively with Mrs. Tara Fogel, who is also of science, who's on the who's online with me tonight, and Mike Reed of math, who is also on, who just is joining us right now. Dr. Benjamin Marcus of ELP, um, of ELA and social studies was not able to join us tonight. As the ELP leadership team, our primary goal is to deliver concise and transparent information. Please take note that when you communicate with one of us, you are communicating with all of us. During this session, I will be answering the most frequently asked questions I am asked after parents receive their scores. First of all, what do these scores mean? And how did the committee use these scores to determine placement in the ELP enrichment? Finally, what are the next steps? The overarching goal for this evening is to answer the question all parents ask. How can I work with my child's teacher to help my child grow academically this year? Before we get into scores and how they are used in the placement process, let's start with what is ALP or Advanced Learning Program. Greenwich Public Schools is committed to de develop, developing academic ta talent in all students and providing the most appropriate academic placement possible to ensure success. The ELP program's mission is to teach students who give evidence of significantly high performance capability in accelerated and enriched curriculum in various subjects with their, with their academic peers. Our grade two program is an enrichment model in the areas of reading and math. Students who are recommended for ELP enrichment are pulled for 30 minutes of enrichment four times a week with the ELP language arts teacher and or for 30 minutes of math en enrichment four times a week with the ELP math teacher. This graphic shows the full placement process. As we talked in November during the first parent meeting, this is overwhelming at first, and it but it is broken down into three phases, referral, assessment, and placement. The referral phase is the direct procedure that enters a student into the evaluation phase. This is what we talked about during the first meeting. In this evaluation phase, we gathered information for a placement decision. The assessments students took provide a multitude of information that is not already within that body of evidence that we've gathered. The scores of these assessments are what you just received. Now let's look at each type of test and how it is scored. The first type of assessment is an ability test. The ability test we use is a cognitive abilities test, better known as the COGAT. The COGAT is a test of reasoning skills. It is not like a spelling or math test where if you know the words or facts, you can get 100%. There is no defined curriculum for the COGAT. The COGAT evaluates relationships, systems thinking, and cognitive abilities in two simple systems, words and numbers. Scores are age normed and reported out as standard age scores. Standard age scores are used to show how students taking the COGAT compare in the rate and level of cognitive development to other students in the same age group. So a student who is seven years, six months is compared with other students who are seven years, six months. Nationally, the st average standard age score is 100. However, in Greenwich, the average standard age score is for the verbal battery is 112 and 119 is our average quantitative battery standard age score. Students recommended for the ALP reading enrichment have a verbal battery standard age score of 131 and the students recommended for the ALP math enrichment have a qualita quantitative battery standard age score of 137. The second type of test is an achievement assessment, which measures what students know and what they're ready to learn next. The NWEA map growth assessment is what we use for this purpose. The NWEA is a computer adaptive assessment. If your child answers a question correctly, the next question is more challenging. If the answer 
it incorrectly, the next one is easier. This type of assessment challenges our top performers without overwhelming students whose skills are below grade level. The NWEA assesses students' understanding of reading or math concepts, adapting so students are answering questions correctly 50% of the time. When the student completes an NWEA map growth assessment, he or she receives a RIT score. A RIT is an abbreviation for a ROSH unit. The difficulty and complexity of each map question is measured using a RIT scale. The student's RIT score indicates the level at which the student was answering questions correctly 50% of the time. Questions that are at the lower RIT scores, RITs, will be answered correctly more frequently, and questions with higher RIT scores will be answered correctly less frequently. The more difficult questions will probably require new learning on the part of the student. Note that each subject area has a unique RIT scale. As a result, scores between subjects are not equivalent. The average reading RIT score for the students recommended for reading enrichment was 211, and the average MAP RIT score for the students recommended for math enrichment was 206. The last type of assessment we use are performance assessments. Whereas the COGAT helps answer the question, how well are you reasoning? And MAP answers the question, do you know it? The performance assessment answers the question, how well can you use your reasoning and what you know to generate knowledge? Unlike COGAT and MAP, in which students select one of, one of the responses provided, a performance assessment requires students to perform a task or generate their own responses. In reading, students were asked to read a fable, then asked four questions requiring the students to analyze and interpret that fable. In math, students were given a set of eight questions intended to assess their capacity to select and deploy their mathematical knowledge in non-routine contexts. Students' reading responses were scored on their demonstration demonstrated ability to analyze and interpret the fable. The reading performance task has a maximum combined score of 12, and the average reading performance task score for students recommended for placement in the class was six. Math performance task scores are reported as the number of those eight questions correct. The average math performance task score for the students recommended for out math enrichment was four also. Upon completing of all of the testing, we now move into the placement phase. Students' tests are further analyzed, and a Z-score is calculated for each assessment. What is a Z-score, you ask? A Z-score describes the position of a raw score in terms of its distance from the mean it is, it, when measured in standard deviation units. The Z-score is positive. It is value lies above the mean, and if it's negative, it lies below the mean. It is useful to standardize the values of, the, in a, normal, of a normal distribution by converting them to a z-score because they enable us to compare scores from different scales. Remember, we had the COGAT, which has a different scale, so a COGAT of 131 can't be combined with an NWA RIT score on a completely different, comp, com, a different scale. So a student may have a COGAT of a 131 and an NWEA RIT score of 206 and a performance test score of four, but without using a Z-score, we can't use, we cannot go any combine or compare those values. As the formula shows, the Z-score is, is simply the raw score minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. The value of the z-score tells you how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. If a z-score is at zero, it's at the mean or average. The z-scores for the COGAT verbal, NWEA reading, and literature task were averaged for reading placement. And the z-scores for the cognitive quantitative the NWA math and the problem solving task were averaged for math placement. These averaged 
Z scores for reading and math were then ranked and a score profile was created for each identified students. These score reports were reviewed by a group of teachers, advisors, and members of the ELP leadership team and what we call a building advisory committee. The purpose of the building advisory committee meeting is to analyze the full body of evidence and use professional judgment to make a placement recommendation for the student. As a team, we are looking for compelling evidence that there is a mismatch between a student's academic needs and instruction. Oops. Students are recommended to ALP if their average Z scores place them within the top 10% of district achievement or the top 10% in building achievement. The average Z score of Z, the average Z score of students who are recommended for ALP reading achievement was 1.1 or one just above one standard deviation above the mean. The average Z score for students recommended for ALP math enrichment was 1.3, so a little bit more than uh, slightly more than one standard deviation above the mean. The final decision is based on a combination of this objective taste data I just talked about and the subjective judgment. Subjective data input is provided from both parents and teachers. Parents are invited to provide input for the committee to consider. On the form, parents ranked the frequency of observations on five behavioral characteristics and were asked to provide examples. Teacher observations are also considered in making recommendations. Observations were based on characteristics and behaviors as defined on the gifted behaviors continuum. Students who have a disability that qualify them for an IEP or an individual education plan or a 504 plan may be twice exceptional and present the characteristics in a slightly different way. Observations of these behaviors are also considered when making recommendations. The team carefully reviewed all of the students' individual academic portfolios and made recommendations that reflect their best professional judgment on the best way to meet each child's individual needs. Teachers routinely instruct, differentiate, provide modifications and extension opportunities for student success for all students in their classroom. Remember, the next evaluation window for additional ALP assessments for potential placement in grade three begins in the spring. You can expect to see more guidance on that in March. I know I went rather fast, so I'd like to thank you for your attention and extend an invitation to ask questions at this time. Now, one question that I have received um, a number of times is whether or not you can uh, you can view the actual test questions there um, the tests are considered cons cons um, secure and I what I did was I made a here's the screenshot of exactly what we sign off on with the tests the tests are to be are no tests are retained at the school or district level and for security reasons they can only be viewed twice when the student is actually taking the assessment they can see the questions and the teachers who are administering the test are can see the questions at that point in time. However, no screenshots, nothing can be taken at that. When we're looking at item analysis reports, we can see what question types there are, but we can't see the actual questions that the students um, receive. So questions, and if you have additional questions about your child's individual questions, please feel free to email any of us and we will be happy to get back together with you and talk with you about individuals. Um, if your daughter, if your child has been play, has been recommended for ALP enrichment for second grade for math, they will not need to test to be placed into the replacement math curriculum for next year. However, they will need to be assessed for the for potential placement into the replacement science curriculum for next year. If they and likewise, if they have been recommended and are in the ALP reading enrichment, they will automatically be placed into the third grade ALP reading replacement 
and unless of course there's a, an issue with that they're not doing well and you're having a conversation with the ALP teachers. Um, I think I just answered this one. I think I just answered that one. Um, some a couple of different people have asked about the Z score for your individual Z scores. The test reports you have you have the test scores in your in the emails that I sent to you. And if you set up a meeting with with me, I can I will certainly share with you your child's individual Z scores and that average Z score. Um, as a team, we were working on how much information do we put into the actual school report without overwhelming people? Um, and it was bad enough that we had to use the words writ <laughs> without confusing people too much. Um, somebody asked about the standard deviation uh, for each test and um, and the mean, and I can share with that that with you when I talk with you about your individual child and where their Z scores are and where they fell within the district and the average in the rankings. The placement process that we're following when we look at, if I go back in here, this big one. This protocol here, this same thing, referral assessment and placement, follows every time we do any ALP assessments. So in March, we will be going through this exact same process again. We'll be starting with the referral process, which will again use the three tier, um, three tiers of referral process. Uh, someone asked earlier today whether it mattered how you got referred. No, it does not. On the when we are meeting as a building advisory committee meeting, we have we do not show anywhere on that student's academic portfolio that we look at how they got there. They're just there. We have assessments there. Then we use the COGAT, NWA, and performance tests again. Um, and then the placement process, the meeting, we get to meet again about your child, which is one of our favorite things to do and look at the whole placement process all over again. Um, in second grade, the ELP does not replace um, math or reading. It's enrichment. It's in addition to their math and reading. Um, uh, starting in third grade, it's a replacement curriculum. So they they will the ALP teacher becomes their math teacher or becomes their reading teacher or becomes their science teacher starting in third grade. But in second grade, it's enrichment only. When we're looking at the Z and we're looking at the population, we have longitudinal data on the um, for what for the cognitive abilities tests. So I use that full population mean there. I do look at each um, the cohort and our population, our mean scores that I reported out um, for our district for the verbal and our standard deviation has not changed over time. Uh, there was, I looked at it very carefully, especially last year, um, looking at was there a COVID effect and that has, we did not see any difference. Um, when we were norming um, for the NWEA, I looked at the NWEA 
all the NWEA grade two fall assessments that I had and the reading and then for math also. The um, performance assessments are normed each year based upon who takes that particular assessment because the fables change. They're regenerated from over over years. So like the ones we used, the questions we used this year had been used in a previous year and will be used again in the future. Um, and those are normed based upon the population that they, they that took that test. Um, for the for spring placement for math, the the COGAT assessment we will not retake for the second graders if they've taken both the verbal and the quantitative they will not need they will not retake that one but they will do an nwea and a performance test because you're going to see a lot of growth in those areas especially in second grade you will see uh, um, growth there um, the cogat on um, we do not those um we're not going to see a long-term growth there um, and we will be using the com the combination of of uh, the verbal quantitative composite as part of the science assessment. The average test scores for our um, are at the Greenwich level. We're looking at a we use local norms. Um, in fact, when we look at and I looked this up just today, I'm going to pull out my piece of paper and um, Tara and Mike don't even have this information. Um, our average um, our average NWEA, like I, I had shared with you that our COGAT verbal, that the national mean is 100 and our in Greenwich, our mean is um, my picture, my pictures. I have too many pictures here. The national mean for the verbal is 112, which is almost a full standard deviation above the national mean. Um, and on the quantitative, um, whereas the national mean is 100, our mean is over a standard deviation above at 119. When we look at our, the um, NWEA, our mean score on the NWEA reading is the the mean score is falls right at the 50th percentile for the national our mean score is at the 93rd percentile nationally for reading and at the 92nd percentile nationally for math um, therefore our entire curriculum it reflects that and reflects that level of achievement for all of our students and so that's why we use our local norms Um, do they get homework for the ALP enrichment classes? They might get a small amount, but the 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 homework is going to mainly come from their from their core classes. Uh, that's going to be teacher dependent on whether or not they're going to give give a little bit of pre work at preview for what they're going to be doing the next day. The way there is no weighted average. That's why we use the Z score. So a, a Z, if you get a 131, um, you're going to get a Z score for that for the COGAT. You're going to get another Z score for the NWEA, and you're going to get a third Z score for the performance task. And those are e are all equally weighted. You just add those three Z scores together and divide by three, and you get your average. We don't wait one over another. Any other questions? All right. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, um, when we talk about the appeal form for the at the second grade, um, second grade, what you're going to do if you wish to appeal at this point, if you have any additional information that we did not already have. Remember, we have the report cards, we have that full body of evidence, along with the information here, along with what you put in to the input form. If there is additional information that we did not have at the time that we sat down with the committee, please submit that. Um, or the other and the or um, go ahead and say, I would just like my child to be to look be looked at again in March, April, when we start that placement process again for the replacement curriculum. You just have to email me. Or actually any of the team. Remember, you can ask you know any questions that you have about your individual child. Please feel free to email us, and we can set up a meeting. I know that I talked, I've emailed a few people that said if you've got still have questions, email me, email my assistant Robin. She's in charge of my calendar. For those of you who know me well, know that that she has full control over telling me where to go. And I just want to remind all the parents on tonight that this presentation, as well as the follow up on Friday for morning families whose uh, schedule matched a morning meeting will both be recorded and posted online on our website. Um, in case this went by a little fast and you wanted a, a refresher that will be available as well as the accompanying slideshow. And uh, we hope to have those videos up um, by sometime this weekend or early next week. Mike, did you have anything to add? The only thing that I would add to this um, presentation would just be to say that um, having been a second grade teacher myself for many years, there's a lot of growth that occurs um, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Um, I, I would even argue that it's probably the grade level that has sees the most growth, both physically, uh, social, emotionally, and academically. So. Um, we do a very good job of um, figuring out where your students are at the beginning of the year and then helping them grow and nurturing them over the course of the year. So, um, you know, what you see at the beginning of the year through this testing process may be totally different if you choose to do it again in the spring. And, um, you know, I just I urge you to um, be cautious to think that their growth is perfectly linear. Um, it is, uh, you know, sort of uh, it, it peaks and it plateaus along the way. And, um, you know, anybody who'd, who'd like to get um, more detail about a, a second grader and, you know, how they operate um, during that year, feel free to email me because I know them all too well. And uh, I, in fact, I have one living with me at home right now. So um, I live it every day. And then the, the final piece I'll add is that we did um, take some time to speak with parents from the uh, PTAC membership and Ms. O'Regan did put together a really nice article in our most recent ALP S'more. The S'more is called All About ALP and it's, it's a little note to parents of to refer or not to refer and what are you seeing at home about your child and how to kind of help you to negotiate whether or not you wanna put your students back up for testing for those of the students who may not have qualified this round. Um, if you don't have access to that in our email list, it is available under the advanced learning tab on our district website. And if you need any help navigating that, um, myself or any of the advanced learning leadership team, as well as Robin, can help you to do that. And um, uh, and um, Tony put it in her um, Greenwich note to parents last week. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Looks like we're getting thank yous in the chat, and um, we will see other families on Friday morning. Everybody else have a wonderful afternoon. Stay uh, cool and drive safely tomorrow morning. Yes. Bye.